The clash between the executive and judiciary that has continued in the country for quite some time now was evident yet again as the Supreme Court stalled the citizenship bill authenticated by the president last Wednesday. The issue of the authentication of the citizenship bill also disrupted the House proceedings for the entire day today as the opposition parties demanded a withdrawal of the much debated bill. Good evening, I'm Avide Shrestha and these are the headlines of the hour. The Supreme Court gives a short-term interim order not to implement the citizenship bill. Opposition parties disrupt House session, protesting against the authentication of the citizenship bill. The pre-detention trial of the alleged culprits in the fake Bhutanese refugee scam begins. Government attorney confident of evidences against the defendants. At least eight people arrested amid tight security as Hong Kong observes Tiananmen anniversary. London, New York, Berlin among other cities to hold anniversary Virgil. And Machindra FC's title aspirations dented following a loss against Nepal Police Club. The police debacle boosts title chances of church boys. The citizenship bill that was authenticated by President Ram Chandra Podel at the recommendation of the Council of Ministers has been drawn into controversy. The citizenship bill, which was passed by the previous federal parliament and halted by then-President Vidya Devi Bhandari nine months ago, was authenticated by President Ram Chandra Podel on 31st of May at the recommendation of the Council of Ministers. After the citizenship bill was published in the National Gazette, preparations were being made by district administration offices to distribute citizenship certificates to the children of parents who are citizens by birth. The Ministry of Home Affairs, through SMS on Friday, had directed all the 77 district administration offices to distribute citizenship certificates as per law. However, at a time when the district administration offices were making preparations to distribute the citizenship certificates, the Supreme Court issued a short-term interim order today not to implement the citizenship bill approved by the President. A single bench of Supreme Court judge Manoj Sharma issued the short-term verdict not to implement the citizenship bill authenticated by President Ram Chandra Podel last Wednesday. People who reached the Dhanusha District Administration Office to get their citizenship certificates with the recommendation from the office ward office were furious when they heard about the Supreme Court's short-term interim order. Likewise, in Kathmandu District Administration Office, 12 applications for citizenship certificate were registered today. However, the process was not moved forward, citing lack of reg regulation. After knowing that the chief district officers would not issue citizenship certificates as per the amended law, the Ministry of Home Affairs held a virtual meeting with CDOs of the Tarai districts at 2 this afternoon. At the virtual meeting, the Home Secretary said that there was no problem in distributing citizenship certificates to the children of parents who are citizens by birth and added that he would clarify through the regulation what to do with the remaining cases. The citizenship bill was amended seeking to grant citizenship to children of individuals who were granted citizenship by birth, non-resident Nepali, citizenship in the name of a mother where the ident identity of the father is not revealed or unknown. Opposition parties obstructed the meeting of the House of Representatives today, protesting against the recently authenticated citizenship bill and the remarks made by Prime Minister Pushpakamal Dahal during his visit to India. Due to the protest, meetings of both the houses have been adjourned until tomorrow. Speaker Devraj Ghimire postponed the House meeting for an hour after main opposition CPN UML along with Rashtriya Swatantra Party and Rashtriya Prajantra Party obstructed the meeting, citing that the citizenship bill was authenticated without carrying out required procedures and demanding answers from the government regarding Prime Minister Dahal's statement, saying that Nepal is ready to hand over Kalapani in place of full-body transit. At the start of the House meeting today, CPN UML Chief Whip Padam Giri said that the meeting would not start until an apology is made regarding Premier Dahal's statement during his India visit to swap the territories and added that the constitution has been breached by authenticating the citizenship bill. Rashtriya Prajantra Party Chairperson Rajendra Lingden also demanded answers from 
Prime Minister Dahal regarding the unified Greater India map installed at the new Parliament Building of India, of which includes Nepal's Lumini and Kapilvastu. Ling then also stated that President Ram Chandra Porel issuing a pardon to Resham Choudhury without the Supreme Court issuing a detailed verdict was against the rule of law. Chief Whip of Rashtriya Swatantra Party, Santos Pariyar, protested against the wrong procedure adopted to authenticate the citizenship bill. The meeting of the House of Representatives, which was halted for an hour, was unable to sit again as consensus was not reached to resume the meeting. Speaker Gimine then adjourned the House meeting until 11 a.m. tomorrow. At today's House meeting, Minister for Finance Prakash Sharan Mahat was scheduled to propose for discussions on the expected revenues and expenditures of the next fiscal year. Likewise, the meeting of the National Assembly has been adjourned until 1 p.m. tomorrow. Main opposition CPN Yamel, along with other opposition parties, had obstructed the meeting protesting against the procedure adopted to authenticate the citizenship bill and Prime Minister Dahal's remarks made during his visit to India. Chairperson of the National Assembly, Ganesh Timilsina, has issued a ruling for the government to provide answers to the issues. It's time now for our segment Public Pulse, where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. But before that, let's take a look at the results from yesterday's poll. Yesterday, we had asked you, what should the government do to promote the Nepali film sector? 69% voted for A, adopt film industry-friendly policy. 12% voted for B, establish film city. And 19% voted for C, search for international market. And here's today's question. Why does house session get frequently disruptive? Your options are A, due to monopoly of ruling parties, B, stubborn opposition, and C, regular process. The voting is on, type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. The Office of the Government Attorney today produced evidences against the alleged culprits in the fake Putnese refugee case. The two joint attorneys presented evidences against the defendants right at the start of the pre-detention trial that started from today. Joint attorneys Mahesh Khatri and Janak Ghimire pleaded against the defendants as they presented evidences against the alleged culprits. Joint attorney Khatri produced evidences regarding the involvement and the plan of the prime accused. Likewise, Ghimire presented mobile messages between Secretary Tiek Narayan Pandey and alleged mastermind Keshav Dulal. Joint attorney Ghimire also explained how the defendants needed to be investigated under organized crime. Likewise, the bank transaction details of Indrajit Rai, the security advisor of former Home Minister Rambadur Thapa, were also presented during the court proceedings today. Likewise, Similar bank transaction details of Sandeep Raimaji, son of Topadu Raimaji, were also produced. The single bench of Justice Prem Kumar Nyopani will give a verdict on whether to release the defendants on simple date, release on bail, or send them to custody. A case was filed by the Office of the Government Attorney on 24th of May, making 30 individuals as defendants, seeking a fine of just over 275 million rupees alongside sentencing. Most of the defendants have rejected the alleged charges levied against them. However, investigating police officials have expressed their confidence regarding evidences to prove the involvement of the defendants. In our public voice segment today, we have asked people in several provinces what should be done to completely end racial discrimination. Let's take a look at what they had to say. Public voice. <laughs> it's time now for the international update. 
Hong Kong police today detained eight people near a park, four of them for seditious intention and disorderly conduct as authorities tightened security on the 34th anniversary of the 1989 Tiananmen Square crackdown. Restrictions in Hong Kong have stifled what were once the biggest vigils marking the bloody crackdown by Chinese troops on pro-democracy demonstrations, leaving cities like London, New York, Berlin and Taipei to keep alive the memory on the June 4 anniversary. Commemorations are expected today in at least 30 places in North America, Europe and Asia. The eight people were detained near Victoria Park, where for years after 1989 democracy activists gathered on the Tiananmen Square anniversary. The police said the eight had been detained after displaying protest items loaded with seditious wordings, chantings and committing unlawful acts. Hong Kong activists say such police action is part of a broad campaign by China to end dissent in the city that was promised special freedoms for 50 years under a one country, two systems formula when, when former colonial power Britain handed it back in 1997. Security is significantly tighter across Hong Kong this year, with up to 6,000 police officers deployed, including riot and anti-terrorism officers. Senior officials have warned people to abide by the law. In a statement, the police said they are highly concerned about some people attempting to incite and provoke others to commit illegal acts that endanger national security, public order and public safety. In Beijing, Tiananmen Square was thronged with tourists taking pictures under the watchful eyes of police and other personnel, but with no obvious sign of stepped-up security. We have more news coming up, but right now it's time for another short break. Sports News. Defending champions Machindra Football Club suffered a massive jolt to their title aspirations as they went down 1-2 against a resurgent Nepal Police Club. The scenario greatly boosted the chances of Church Boys United's title bid. Church Boys now only need a single point from their remaining two matches to win the Martyrs Memorial A Division League. In the match played at Chassel Ground today, the police club came from behind to stun the defending champions who were earlier looking to make a hat-trick of domestic top flight. Nepal police now have won their last five consecutive matches. It's time now for the weather update. That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Good night.